Next we have Bronzino. And he's known for this very accurate sort of style. He's going to be elongating forms and working in the Mannerist style once again. And he famously paints the Venus, Cupid, Folly, and Time, which you see a little bit in the background here and a little more clearly here. Now, the piece is commissioned by Cosimo de' Medici, the first Grand Duke of Tuscany, as a gift for the King of France. And here what we're seeing is a sensuousness that's unfamiliar to the Renaissance. After all, in the Renaissance, we're trying to stay away from a lot of the sensual, the erotic, because a lot of what they're doing is religious. It's a little different air that's going on at the time. So let's start moving through the piece. First, we have Cupid fondling his mother while Folly prepares to shower them with rose petals. We know this is Cupid because we've already been told that that's Venus. We'll find out in a moment why. And Cupid is sitting there kissing and uh, grabbing his mother. You'll notice his back is stretched and the buttocks accentuated. Time appears behind them to reveal this quote-unquote playful incest. And so we have the old balding man representing time, this idea that time will reveal all things. The mask symbolizes deceit. So the idea is that love accompanied by envy and inconsistency is foolish and lovers will discover its folly in time. So it's a very long sort of theme, but basically if you are hiding things, if there's envy and inconsistency, then the relationship is doomed to fail. Really a complicated idea to try and get out in a single two-dimensional canvas, but yet that's exactly what Bronzino is doing. Here the composition is laid out to block deep space and the lines uh, create a sculptural quality within the work. So what we're seeing is this very linear form. He's taking off to Masaccio, his use of very heavy chiaroscuro. He's blocking off the background, which keeps us focused in the foreground. We can't enter into the painting. This is something that is separate from us. But by keeping us separate, it also gives us this larger moral tale. We don't want to be surrounded by a big moral tale necessarily. So how do we know who these figures are? Well, you'll notice that Venus is holding a golden apple in the hand on the right and an arrow in the hand on the left. The golden apple refers to the judgment of Paris or basically the start of the Trojan War when Paris was asked to judge three goddesses, Hera, Athena, and Venus or Aphrodite for their beauty. And he gives the award, the golden apple, to Venus. So that immediately tells us that that is Venus. That symbolism is important, otherwise it's just another nude woman kissing Cupid. Cupid is symbolized by her other hand holding the arrow, which is Cupid's arrow, and then Cupid, of course, has wings and a bow across his back. So we get those symbols giving us a sense of identity. As we look at it, this sort of playful yet cautionary tale is really there as both a gift and a warning. It's a chance for Bronzino to really delve into deeper themes that aren't religious in nature. You'll notice he's not getting at some far-fetched element of religious canon or religious dogma. Instead, he's getting at really sort of secular teaching, something very unusual during the Renaissance.